Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Angel Peña, and I will be your instructor for today. I have a background in painting. I graduated from the University of Texas at El Paso with a bachelor's in fine arts, with a concentration in painting, and also a minor in sculpture. So I have been working with uh, art for quite a while now. So today we're going to be working on a still life. Something similar to this, right? So before we even get started with the painting part, we got to make sure that we have the proper materials, the proper equipment. So the first thing we need is, of course, paint, right? Acrylic paint. We're going to be working with acrylics today. We're going to be needing a palette or palettes to mix our colors. We're going to need a cleaning rag, right? Something to clean our brushes and also to wipe down the canvas if we need to. Talking about brushes, you're gonna need different sizes of brushes and also a container holding water so that we can clean those brushes. Since we're gonna be working with a still life, we're also gonna need objects, right? So things that you can find around your household. It could be fruits, uh, something you know more classical or Something of your choice, right? Uh, maybe you have some interesting uh, sets around your home that you want to paint. So you can go with that. It's all up to you guys. Another thing we're going to be needing is a sketchbook, right? Because before we even start painting, we want to do little thumbnails of our still life, right? To make sure that we do like the composition. It's also going to give us an idea on how to go about uh, with the painting, painting process. And the last thing we're gonna need is a setup, right? A workspace, uh, somewhere to lay our still life and also somewhere to paint our still life, right? So you don't necessarily need to have an easel, you can paint it on a table, but if you do have an easel, then that'll be even better, right? So once you have all of that, then you can move on to the next step. So once you have your objects, the next thing you want to do is play around with the position of them, right? See how they look and how they interact with each other, right? The shadows, how they cast on the other objects. You can also play with the light, right? Change the position of the light if possible. And look at the way the shadows move and again interact with the object. And you want it from above. So once you're happy with your setup, now you're ready to start sketching. So now that we're at the sketching part and we have our sketchbook ready, the first thing we want to do is lay out a little box. Uh, this time I'm, I'm only going to draw uh, one sketch, but you can also do several, right? Uh, you can do more than one maybe six, maybe nine, right? Smaller boxes. But for the purposes of this class, I'm doing one and a bit bigger, right? So I want to draw my box similar to the size of the canvas, right? After doing that, I want to start working on my sketch. And I like to draw the bigger objects first. I wanna get an idea of their scale in relation to the canvas. So th that's the first thing that I do. Now I begin with the smaller objects, keeping in mind the scale of them in comparison to the bigger objects. So I'm, al I'm always measuring like one to the other and how they measure up in space. I only want to get the basic shapes in, right? 
no shading, not for now. I want to focus on just the basic shapes. I can start going a little darker, uh, laying some of the shapes within the shapes, right? Uh, drawing out those patterns that you see in the vase and the little cups as well. I'm just kind of like working my way through the different shapes that I see in my composition, right? Learning their position in the canvas and how they compare to the other objects. And then we can start working on our shading little by little. We don't want to go too dark, we just want to get a general idea on how things are going to look. So we just keep working on it. And the more we work on it, then we can start getting a little darker and darker, right? We start working on all the highlights, all the shadows and reflections, really getting a, an idea of where they are at. This is why we do studies, right? It's kind of like we're studying and preparing for an exam. The more we study, the better we're going to be for the exam. So basically that's what we're doing right here. We're getting familiar with the composition so that once we go into the painting process, it becomes a lot easier. We already know what we're doing and we kind of know where things are supposed to be in the canvas. So once we're happy with it, then if you want, you can do uh, another study, maybe from a different angle. Maybe you want to go back and change some of your objects, the position that they're in. But if you like your composition, then you can go ahead and start working on your canvas, start painting. Now we are ready to start painting. And the first thing that I like to do is lay down a gown to get rid of all that white. And this doesn't have to be perfect. Again, it's only to get rid of all the background. This time I'm using a raw sienna. And I like this color because it is somewhere in between the dark and light tones. This step is up to you, uh, but I do find it very helpful getting rid of all that white. Once we are done with this, then we can start laying, laying down our basic shapes with a small brush and some light color like yellow or orange. This time I'm using an unbleached titanium. I start by sketching all the shapes just as I did in my sketch. I lay down the bigger shapes first because I want to get the proportion right. If you're not happy with the way they look, now is a good time to start over. When in doubt, blur it out. You haven't invested that much time in it, so starting over isn't that difficult. But if you're happy with it, then you can go ahead and move on to the next step. Once I have the main shapes in place, then I start working more on the areas that I have similar tones. This part we refer to as blocking. Really going in there and filling all those areas that have similar tones. For example, I know that the objects are mostly a light color, and so I cover those areas. I'm staying away from the titanium white and marsh black. These colors will be saved for later. We want to continue filling all those big areas with paint. Cover up all that raw sienna.
as we continue we start moving into the molding step where we will focus more and more on the smaller details we want to keep our colors varied and start using smaller brushes we really want to have fun with the mixture of the paint and we don't need to be accurate with the colors let mistakes happen I remember this famous artist, Rockstraw Downs. He paints mostly panoramic, hyper-realistic paintings. But one of the things he told me, and that really stuck to me, was that every brushstroke counts. They are all important. And you can interpret this in different ways, but overall, at least from what I understand, is that whether planned or not, every stroke becomes part of the overall painting. You are learning from your brushstroke, how the paint runs, how it lays on the canvas, how it dries. And so, you continue until you reach a point of satisfaction. In my opinion, a painting is never quite finished. You as the artist have to decide when to stop. It always seems that you can change something here and there. But we must move forward. we have reached the end of this painting course and I just want to say that all you need to do is to keep practicing keep painting you know the more you do it the better you're gonna become it's no secret um, just keep working on your craft also I want to remind you guys that there will be more videos from the El Paso Museum of Art so stay tuned and again thank you for watching <laughs>